Hey everybody, Ashton here from Without Code, and today we're looking at our new Media Drive Gallery widget. This is our flagship gallery widget for the web builder, and it supports mixed media, so you can display a mix of images and videos. There's also categories, so users can filter the gallery as they like. Categories can be configured to show a single category at a time, or as a filter where multiple categories can be selected. This widget links to Media Drive, which is our own media storage service. We built Media Drive differently from the ground up, specifically for this type of use. We do not compress or downscale or optimize images or video. This means that your media will not be degraded in any way. Now, it's challenging to use media on storage platforms and galleries because they're designed for storage, not hosting. It's actually notoriously difficult to even grab a proper URL for a hosted image on services like Dropbox, but Media Drive is intended exactly for this purpose, and it offers lightning fast streaming and unaltered photo displays. Using a gallery linked to Media Drive also makes the widget setup very convenient. All you need to do is grab a streaming URL in Media Drive from the folder where your files are stored, and that's it. And of course, Media Drive is accessible from your Without Code dashboard, so all of your images and video are close by. Now, just keep in mind that you must use Media Drive in order to use this widget. Now, if you're new to Media Drive, you can learn more by visiting our Media Drive page in the Resources dropdown of our site. Now, before we load the widget, let's get our gallery folder set up in Media Drive. Now, you may already have a folder containing all of your gallery images and video, and if that's the case, this is going to be really easy. But for this example, let's set up a new gallery folder from scratch. So here in my Media Drive, I'm going to click the Create Folder button on the top menu, and I'll name the folder Gallery. Now, let's click into the folder, and I'll click the Upload File button in the top menu. And as we can see, I can select files from my computer or simply just drag and drop them into the window. Now, I've got a bunch of photos and video in a folder here labeled with various categories that we're going to use in our gallery. So I'll simply drag them into my media drive. Now, we can upload up to 20 items at one time. So I'm going to do this in two drags. So now I've uploaded all of my content into my gallery folder. Now, technically, all of my content is now ready for the gallery widget, but if I were to link this folder to the gallery right now, all of my gallery items would be missing titles, descriptions, and categories. All of those things are set right here in Media Drive by adding them to the files. So I'm going to go to the first image here and click the Info button. And now it's going to show me the file details, like the file size and other stuff. And I'm going to click the Custom Data tab on the top. Now we see a bunch of fields for title, description, category, and URL. I'm going to enter the title, Picture 1, for this one. And I'll add some quick lorem ipsum text for the description. Now the category field is pretty unique and pretty cool. This is where you're going to create the categories that will display on the top of your gallery. So all I need to do to create a new category is simply type it in. So let's create a category now called Lifestyle. Now the gallery will automatically show a button labeled Lifestyle. And as we add categories to additional images, new categories will also be created. To place an image in multiple categories, simply enter the category names right here in this field separated by commas. Just be sure as you enter the same category for multiple images that you use the exact same spelling. Now let's click Update. And just like that, we've now added all of the necessary information for this image. So for our gallery to function properly with all of these images, I need to add a title and category to each image in my gallery. Now I'm fast forwarding through this to save time and I'll omit the descriptions for now, but you can see how easy it is to add the necessary information for each image right here in Media Drive, allowing for quick and seamless integration into the gallery widget that we're going to do here shortly. So now that we've set titles, descriptions, and categories for our images, we'll head over to our web builder and set up the gallery itself. I've got our shutter theme pulled up here with an empty gallery page ready to go. So I'll jump into our widgets panel. We'll drag the Media Drive Gallery widget out and drop it into our empty row here. Now right off the bat, we can see our gallery appear populated with some content. Now this is just sample content, so we'll replace that in a moment. Let's open the widget options panel. First option here is Unique ID, and you'll need to make sure to use an ID that is unique when using multiple instances of this widget on the same page. Right now, we're okay with the default. Media Stream URL. This is how we link our gallery with the folder that we previously set up in Media Drive. Now, the way we get the stream URL is to go back into Media Drive. We'll click on the Info button on our gallery folder. We'll enable Media Stream. Then we'll grab the streaming URL. 
and all we need to do is click anywhere in this box to copy it. We'll head back to the widget and paste it in the media stream URL. And just like that, we can now see all of our images and videos from our gallery folder populate the gallery. Now, as we scroll through here, you can see a couple of our thumbnails are just gray, and that's because we don't yet have thumbnail images set for our videos. So let me show you how to set those. We'll head back to Media Drive, and let's look into our gallery folder. And let's find our first video and click the Info button. And right at the top here, we see a Select Image button. We'll go ahead and click that, and we'll add an image. And just like that, this is now the image that will be displayed as the thumbnail image in the gallery. And when the user clicks on that thumbnail, a light box will open and display the video. Now, before I leave Media Drive here, I'm going to show you one more thing. Going back to my root folder, I'm going to click on the Info button on my gallery folder. Since we've made some changes in Media Drive, it's a good idea to refresh it. And we can do that by clicking the Update Stream link right here. This will refresh the folder and update the content in our gallery. Now, back to the Builder. If you ever have any trouble seeing your updated content in your gallery, you may also need to reload your browser page so that it pulls fresh data from the media drive. So now that we have our titles, descriptions, categories, and thumbnail images loaded for all of our content, our gallery is now looking pretty awesome. Let's give the page a preview. Great, we see our category buttons here, and they're filtering the gallery content as they should. Let's jump back into the widget options panel and go over the remaining widget options. Now we've already discussed the unique ID and the media stream URL, so let's open this right here, Gallery Settings. Our first option here for Gallery Layout. There's a drop down here that allows you to choose from uniform, mosaic, or masonry layouts for your gallery. If you choose uniform, it'll arrange all the thumbnail images uniformly with fixed aspect ratios. Height and width will be the same for all thumbnails regardless of the original aspect ratio. If you choose Mosaic, it arranges the thumbnails to form equal rows, maintaining their original aspect ratio, and they're all resized to have the same height. Now, if you choose Masonry, this arranges the thumbnails to form equal columns, containing their original aspect ratio, and they're all resized to have the same width. Down here for Gallery Sorting, this setting sorts gallery items into Title Ascending, Title Descending, Reverse, and Random. For display mode, this setting determines whether your gallery will show all of your items at once or whether to use pagination to break up the gallery into pages. Now, if you select pagination on this option, we get a new option for pagination style, and you can choose from rectangles, dots, or numbers. Here for maximum number of rows to show, this allows you to set the maximum number of rows that will be shown. Now, larger galleries will display pagination if the number of gallery items exceeds the number of rows selected. So use this setting to control the height of your entire gallery. Gallery display animation. This is the animation style applied to the entire gallery when switching between categories. In gallery display animation duration, it's the length of time in milliseconds that it takes for the gallery display animation to complete. Let's jump down here to Filter Tag Settings. We have an option for Enable Categories, which does just that. It enables the Category Filter buttons. And Category Filter Mode, Single or Multiple. This sets the behavior for the category buttons. Single allows the user to display a single category at a time by selecting a button. And Multiple allows the user to filter multiple categories by clicking on multiple buttons. Now down into Thumbnail Settings. We have thumbnail width. Now this is an important setting that allows you to control the size of the thumbnails in the gallery. Now the options you see here will vary a bit depending on the gallery layout that you've chosen, either uniform, masonry, or mosaic. Now keep in mind that there is no number of columns setting because these thumbnail size settings automatically update the number of columns. For thumbnail padding, this sets the padding between the thumbnail images in the gallery. And we have link thumbnails too. You can choose from lightbox or external link if present. The lightbox selection opens the lightbox when the user clicks on a thumbnail, and this is the default behavior. Now, external link opens a link when the user clicks on the thumbnail, and when using an external link, you'll set the link address and the custom data area of the item in the media drive. Thumbnail display animation. This is the animation scene when the gallery thumbnails come into view. And thumbnail display animation duration, of course, is the length of time that it takes in milliseconds for the thumbnail display animations to complete their animation. And thumbnail hover effects. These effects are seen when you hover over a gallery thumbnail. And keep in mind that you can select multiple effects at once. Down here in lightbox settings, we have lightbox theme. Now this sets a dark or light theme to the lightbox area, which is the area that appears when the user clicks on an image. And this impacts the background of the lightbox. 
Now the remainder of the settings in this section enable or disable various attributes of the lightbox, and each toggle is labeled with its specific function. Finally, let's jump over to the design section. Now there's numerous options here that allow you to style various elements of the gallery, such as fonts, colors, and dedicated styling sections for the gallery, lightbox, category buttons, descriptions, and more. Now all the settings are labeled with their exact function, so I don't need to explain each one in detail as they're pretty self-explanatory. Now, if you haven't seen our tutorial videos or documentation for Media Drive, I'd suggest checking that out. Now, those are going to help you get familiar with it and learn more about how it's different from other file storage services. As far as image optimization is concerned, as mentioned earlier, images and video in Media Drive are not optimized, compressed, or scaled down in any way. Images and video retain their full quality and therefore file size. So we encourage you to keep an eye on file sizes for images and video in your gallery. Large file sizes will result in slow page loads, especially on slower internet connections. So make sure you optimize your files as needed to manage load times. Thanks for joining me on this one, guys. I know it was a long one. We hope you do enjoy the new Media Drive Gallery widget, though. It's a very powerful tool, and we're confident that you're going to benefit immensely from its versatility. So thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll catch you in the next tutorial. Cheers.